Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm continuing the series of where I dissect, not really, just inf informationally, but I dissect feeder insects. That sounds gross. New word change, where I talk about them, <laughs> their nutrition facts and things like that. How to keep them, how to gut load them, how to store them, yada yada. So I've talked about superworms, I've talked about black soldier fly larvae, I've talked about waxworms and hornworms. Also, we'll be talking about mealworms down the road, and today's video is about earthworms, as you saw by the title. Now, I don't have a lot of animals that eat earthworms. However, I do have many a clip to fill out the space it will take, so you might see some repeated animals. It'll be cute either way, so I'm sorry that it's not going to be as many faces as you'd see in my superworm or hornworm video, but not a lot of my reptiles eat earthworms, so... With all that said, this video is just going to go right to the voiceover and also please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and enjoy! So the earthworm is a terrestrial invertebrate with a segmented body. They're also called night crawlers, but should not be confused with red wigglers, which have a foul taste and can make your pet sickly because sometimes they just don't respond well to the animal eating them and they can cause like regurgitation. This is the case with my garter snake Mikasa before I got her. The person who had her was feeding her um, red wigglers at first and it did not sit well in her stomach. I have also seen axolotls spit out red wigglers, so it's best to just avoid them entirely and stick to what we're talking about, which are earthworms. Earthworms come in a variety of sizes, but when full grown, they are quite large and strong. So a lot of people choose to chop them to the desired size, that way they can't like crawl out of a baby snake or put up like a really big fight against a frog. I usually cut mine into halves or thirds. When you buy earthworms for your pet, they'll often come in a small container. You can keep them in this container in order to store them in your home. They'll often be inside of dirt or another moist burrowing medium, and you'll want to keep that in there as well. I keep my earthworms in the fridge. It's one of the best places to keep them because they really like it cold and don't tolerate the heat well. Like You don't want to get them above like 64 degrees. I get my earthworms from Josh's Frogs. I think the containers they sell are like 25 or I think they have one really big one that's like 500 or something crazy. But I get the ones that are 25 count and I keep them in the fridge for weeks and weeks and they never die or go bad or anything like that. I don't recommend using wild caught worms. A lot of people will and a lot of people don't have issues doing it, but if you do, you do run the risk of like them containing some sort of parasite or having been um, in the presence of fertilizers or pesticides, which your pet can then get by eating them. So I don't recommend it. A lot of people do it. It's going to be up to you to make that choice, but I personally just recommend buying them from somewhere that breeds them for pets. Now let's talk about their nutritional facts. They are 82% moisture, 11% protein, 3% fat, 2% fiber, 1% ash, and they have a positive calcium to phosphorus ratio of 1.5 to 1. It's really great that they have a positive calcium to phosphorus ratio because that means you don't have to dust them in any calcium. For those who do not know, the calcium to phosphorus ratio just implies that a lot of the feeder insects that we offer have a high ratio of phosphorus and a low ratio of calcium. So when you have a disparity between the phosphorus and the calcium, it inhibits your reptile's ability to absorb the calcium from the insect and to make up for this difference, we dust our insects with calcium. But because the earthworm has a positive calcium to phosphorus ratio, we don't have to do that. And in fact, if you dust your earthworm with calcium, it will kill it and that will make it stop wriggling, which could be what entices your animal to eat it in the first place. Now let's talk about a couple problems with earthworms because like all other feeder things, they're not perfect. One, because they have such high moisture content, they can cause some loose stools in your animal, but it shouldn't be something that's ongoing, just, you know, the poop after having earthworms. Two, earthworms can carry parasites, but this is usually not an issue unless the animal falls ill. And three, they are best when part of a varied diet, just like all other feeders. And one helpful tip if you're worried about your animal ingesting any substrate or anything like that, just rinse them off with some cold water, not hot water, because that will hurt them, kill them, make them stop wriggling. Use cold water to rinse them off. Uh, make sure it's dechlorinated water before you offer it to your animal. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this informational and insightful. Please check the playlist down below to see all the other informational videos I've made about insects as feeders. Also, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And with all that said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.